When you think of the most famous and respected magician, who comes to your mind? Is it Harry Houdini? If I got that right, I mean, you gotta at least like the video. But Harry Houdini, like, I don't know. The more I learn about that guy, I just, n no, no, maybe. But the man we're talking about in this video is Di Vernon. And the reason for that is because today I'll be sharing with you his legendary force. What up crew, it is Magic Monday and this is your place to learn magic, master your performance and captivate audiences. If it's your first time on this channel, make sure to like and subscribe and check out some of my other content because seriously, I have way too much content. But anyway, today I'll be sharing with you Di Vernon's Rendezvous Force that not only works as a card force, but a full on card trick. Let's do it. All right, ladies and gentle people. So check this out. We're gonna start off by having the spectator go ahead and shuffle up the deck as much as they would like. Let's just say this much. They can even give it a ripple shuffle if they'd like. Here we go, and we'll end it with a few cuts, just like this. So once the spectator is satisfied with the shuffling, I gotta shuffle a little bit more over there. Uh, we're gonna hand the deck back over to me as the performer, and I'm gonna go ahead and make a prediction. Hmm. And uh, by the way, the prediction is going to be uh, something like this. So I'll, I'll make, um, no, I lied, I don't want that. I'll make uh, this card my prediction over here, okay? And the prediction would be as follows, because of course there are no duplicate cards in the deck. So for example, if my prediction was the Queen of Diamonds, that means your card selected would be the Queen of Hearts. So the card of the same color and same value. All right, so now that you know that, I'm gonna go ahead and start dribbling the deck. You can call out stop whenever you'd like. Let's just say right here. Gonna stop and I'm gonna hand you over this packet of playing cards. We'll put it right here and hopefully you can see my prediction on screen right there. Now I'm gonna start doing this with the cards. I'm gonna take one card from the top and one card from the bottom of the remaining pile. And I'm just gonna keep going like this and you can tell me to stop whenever you're ready. Right here, okay, well, we're running out. So let's just stop here. You want this on top, on bottom, right here on top. Okay, we'll put that here, put this like this. Now count how many cards you have in your pile. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 playing cards, all right? So I'm gonna take my pile and your selected card will be the 25th card, the card in the 25th position. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Now this card was the deck was completely shuffled by you. Once the deck was shuffled, I made a prediction. You went ahead um, and uh, as I dribbled through the deck, you call that stop wherever you wanted. And then from there, uh, you were able to stop wherever you wanted in this pile as well. And uh, we ended up with your card being the three of spades. And if we take a look at my prediction, hopefully it's your matching card. And here it is, the three of clubs, a perfect match. Yo, 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 welcome to the tutorial. Just a little bit of background on this trick, even though I kind of already gave it to you. This is uh, the uh, Rendezvous Force by uh, Di Vernon. And I actually first saw this trick in uh, Scam School. I thought it was really cool. And uh, when I performed it for the first time a couple years ago, I it just, I don't know, I got some really, really great reactions and it felt very magical in my hands. So I thought might as well go ahead and share. So uh, that being said, let's go ahead and break it down. One quick thing to note, you need a deck of 53 playing cards just because of some mathematical principles because if you do this with 52 or 54, it will not work. So be careful, 53, you can either throw in an extra joker with your normal 52 or some other random card, I don't, I don't know. But like any other trick that I do, I like to give as much creative control, creative control, is that, is that even how to say it? I wanna give as much control to the spectator as possible, keep it as interactive as possible. This way, um, during the whole effect, the spectator will feel like, you know, they played a big contribution in, in this card trick. And at the end, the reaction will be much greater. So uh, that being said, you hand the deck over to the spectator and allow them to shuffle it up as much as they'd like. Let's just give it a quick riffle shuffle and, and a few cuts. Once that's complete, you take the deck back from the spectator and this is where you make a prediction. And the prediction is, is key here. You're gonna take a look and memorize the 28th card from um, you know, the deck facing you. So the easiest way to get to that 28th card is that obviously you can, you can count, okay? And usually I like to count in piles of either three or four just to, you know, just to make my life easier. So the easiest way to count would really just be count 
nine piles of three and then take the next card. So nine piles of three is 27. You take the next card, it is 28. All right, so you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So this, this didn't work for us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the card that we're gonna be remembering is the Jack of Diamonds, okay? Um, and you don't want this to be like a completely silent process. So what I like to do is I count till maybe about seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or a seven or eight. I stop here, make sure I remember how many more I have to go and tell the spectator that um, I'm looking for the uh, prediction card. And then I almost start explaining how the prediction works. So um, then I go eight, nine, I come to my Jack of Diamonds and now you wanna find the pair of the Jack of Diamonds, which would be the Jack of Hearts. All right, and the Jack of Hearts will either be in this pile or it's going to be in this pile. So this is, we're gonna say, this is the top pile. We're gonna say this is the bottom pile, right? With the deck face down. So if the Jack of Hearts is in the bottom pile, which is the pile underneath the Jack of Diamonds, then yeah, you're pretty much all set to go. You're gonna take the Jack of Hearts and that's gonna be your prediction. Um, and uh, we'll come to the other use case uh, later on, but let's just say it is in the bottom half of the deck. You take out the Jack of Hearts and put it down. And this entire time, as I mentioned, you don't want this to be a quiet process. So you uh, make your prediction, put it down and close up the deck. And then I show the bottom card to the spectator. And I tell them the way this is gonna work, and obviously because a deck doesn't come with duplicate cards, um, if your card is the six of clubs, my predicted card would be the six of spades. So same color and same value. All right, from here, I turn the deck over and I'm gonna start dribbling and ask the spectator to stop. And I like to, when I'm performing this, I just tell the spectator, I'm gonna dribble through the deck. So I dribble through it one time and tell the spectator, I'm gonna do this, tell me when to stop. And you wanna start dribbling very slowly because you don't wanna get past the halfway point of this deck. Because if that does happen, you're gonna pass um, the card that you want them to select, the Jack of Hearts. You're gonna pass that card and that's gonna be an issue. So you go ahead, tell me when to stop. Let's just say they stop right around here. You take this bottom pile, give that to the spectator, and you hold on to this pile. And from here, I explain to the spectator, I'm gonna take cards from the top and bottom like so. And as I'm telling them this, I already have started this whole process. And your goal with this entire process is to get this pile bigger than this pile here. So the your pile that you're putting cards onto should be bigger than the pile the spectator has. And generally you can get a, you know, a good eye for these things um, as you do this trick more and more. So let's just say they say stop here. You ask them, do you want this on top of this pile? You want them on top of this pile? And uh, let's just say on top of this pile. Now, if it comes to a point where the spectator says stop a little earlier here, um, then that's, that's not the greatest. You can kind of weasel your way out of it, but I'd recommend talking until you know this pile is a bit bigger than this pile. And then you could tell the spectator Tell me when to stop. All right, so that's done. You take this, put it on top of that packet. Then you have the spectator go ahead and count off um, how many cards are in their packet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And the card in the 20th position here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We have the Jack of Diamonds and the prediction is the Jack of Hearts. And honestly, it feels so magical the moment this happens. I, I can't even explain it to you, but uh, their minds will be blown and it is gonna be freaking awesome. Now, don't worry, I didn't forget about the other use case where the um, pairing Jack is on the top half of the deck. So let's say you're counting your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay? And again, you come across the Jack of Diamonds. Now you go back searching for the pairing Jack and you see it's not on the bottom half of the deck. What are you gonna do? Then you automatically know the pairing Jack is on the top half. You'll go to the top half, take out that Jack, put that face down. And again, that will be your prediction. Now, the one thing you have to do, again, you can explain to the spectator how the uh, prediction aspect will work. Six of hearts, the, uh, the prediction card will be the six of diamonds. Now, as I'm doing this, you wanna move this one card from the bottom of the deck to the top of the deck. And so an easy way to do this is you turn the deck 
face down, grab a break underneath that bottom card here with your thumb. All right, so you can use your uh, hand to just peel it off, grab a break underneath it. And now you're gonna do a double undercut. So I swivel over a packet of playing cards, bring it underneath here, and I align it with this break. And I'm essentially what I'm doing is I'm dropping this card um, on top of uh, that, the top, uh, the original top half, right? So I'm dropping the bottom card on top of the top half. Then I take half the bottom cards, put them up, take the rest and put them up. So in this way, I've literally taken the bottom card and moved it to the top. And from here, you'd proceed exactly how um, the, um, you'd proceed exactly how you did the first time. So let's just quickly go through that at like 600% speed. 2021, one, two, 2021. There it is, Jack of Diamonds and your prediction, the Jack of Hearts. So the only difference is if it's on the top half, you're gonna move one card from the bottom to the top using the double um, undercut method. And uh, if it's already on the bottom half, then all you gotta do is proceed with the rest of the trick and you're all good. What I really love about this effect is that it feels like pure magic. Even in the moment, being the performer, the moment the cards are flipped and they turn out to match, it just, I don't know, it just seems like you may not even be expecting it, but it just it just matches and everything is, everything's gonna be okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you wanna help me create more content like this, do check out my Patreon and consider joining at any one of the tiers. Each contribution goes a long way in building this community, creating video ideas, and helping me pursue this full time. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great week ahead and I'll see you really soon. Peace out.